Thanks so much. And look, guys, fantastic to be here. It's uh, a real pleasure and privilege to uh, to be able to share some of my knowledge, my experiences with you guys. Uh, we know we've got a, a, the whole range of traders on here. Some some of you are quite new to the game, and others who have been in the market for some time. Wherever you're at right now, what I'm hoping for you for this session uh, as a teacher is that you all walk away with something that you can apply to your trading. Although much of what I'm going to talk about is going to be uh, to do with options, um, many of the principles and concepts I'm going to discuss are applicable to vehicles across the board, irrespective of what you're trading. So, as I said, my hope for you is you, you all walk away with something that you can uh, that you can apply to your trading, or at least consider. My name is Mike Smith, as uh, I've been so kindly introduced, and I've been 20 years an options trader. I've traded other vehicles as well, and, uh, and occasionally, uh, occasionally um, jump into the FX market. Uh, um, Janet mentioned uh, um, Hawkeye Traders. I've been with them for two years as the options specialist. Uh, Nigel Hawkes, the founder and, and developer of Hawkeye Software, saw me present in, a, in, in Perth, in Australia, where I currently, where I currently live, and decided that, uh, that I would be a nice fit uh, for them uh, as, a, as a whole company. And since then, we've developed our, our range of options education and trade learn portfolio service. On top of that, I've been 10 years a coach and teacher. So I've, as well as making most of the mistakes myself in, in early trading years, I've also seen, uh, seen those common mistakes that others made and we're going to talk a little bit about that as we go through. And as a teacher, look, I'm passionate about seeing traders become independent and empowered. It's not about just following somebody else's recommendations or somebody else's lead. It's about you growing as a trader so you can get to where you want to be. That's my that's my wish for you in the long term. And if I can contribute to that in some way, shape or form, I'll be delighted to uh, delighted to do so. So introduction to me done, let's get on to the important content of the next hour or so. Uh, and we're just before we uh, just before we go into that, it's worthwhile talking a little bit about Dokai trading software, which uses a volume spread analysis approach. Now, volume spread analysis is a, is a type of technical analysis, not surprisingly, and, and what it does is it looks into price action and its relationship to volume. The idea behind using VSA is that really these are the price and volume are the only two leading indicators. If we look at other indicators that you can put on charts, many of them are lagging. So that's why VSA grabbed my attention probably about five or six years ago. And, and since then, and becoming part of the Hawkeye family, uh, we've just taken that to the next level and put it into an options context. So what we're about is looking at one of the things that uh, our last speaker uh, made a point of, uh, of mentioning somewhere along this presentation there where he talked about a trading edge. And so really 250% last year, which was sensational, uh, that was a great year and the great year was in place because we'd looked at the things that go to make a trading edge. Okay, so we're going to talk about that as a main theme throughout the presentation. But recognizing that many of you won't have perhaps traded options before, we're going to start really at why options may be a, an interesting thing to add to your trading toolbox. And just so I can pitch the rest of the presentation correctly, I've just got uh, a little poll that I want to, uh, uh, that I'm hoping you, we should be able to launch that I would really appreciate your participation in. So it's a poll launch now. And just want to know where you are. Are you totally new to options? Are you aware of what options are but never traded them? You've traded perhaps one option strategy before, maybe covered calls or maybe just directional ball calls and ball puts, or you trade multiple strategies. So if you could just tick one of those boxes, that would be sensational. I'll just give another five or six seconds for you to do that. Fantastic. Nearly half of you participated already. That's exactly uh, exactly what I want to see, uh, because as uh, your best learning is going to take place if you participate in it. Okay, so we've got a big mix there. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate uh, really appreciate your responses there. 
I'm not going to share the results. That's for my purposes, uh, purposes only, just as I said, to make sure that I pitch this right. So really, aiming at um, you guys who are uh, relatively new or, or inexperienced in auctions, there are three reasons why auctions are probably my preferred vehicle. First of all, there's a power of flexibility. So you can trade multiple strategies to fit your individual investor access, and by that I mean how often you're able to look at the market and objectives. Then we've got the power of opportunity, which is obviously looking at trading different market conditions. Now, we're all familiar with going long or short positions in FX or futures trading and, and even stocks. The advantage or one of the things about Opt which really appeals is we can put together the four different types of position, the bought call, sold call, bought put, sold put, in different combinations to trade different ideas. And this includes trading, profiting from something that trades within a range. It includes shorter term strategies and longer term strategies. And so that really is one of the major benefits of this. However, going alongside that, if I was to list the five major things that great option traders do that I've seen over the years, uh, one of the major things, one of the number one things is they match strategy to market. So one of the cornerstones of what we teach and of for those of you moving forward, you're going to get this in abundance, is how we look at the market and then determine which is the right strategy to pick. I am going to mention it as we go along today. The third one is the power of transferability and that essentially means that many of you who have already traded, albeit in different vehicles, the basic rules of the game are the same. So if you've traded FX or futures before, you, uh, many of the lessons that you learned and many of the things that the previous two speakers have been talking about are very, very applicable to options trading. So those three things are the, uh, uh, really the key reasons why option trading is my preferred vehicle and many people choose to add options trading to what they're trading already. As I said right at the beginning, one of the things that's really fundamental is developing an options trading edge. And by a trading edge, we do mean giving yourself an advantage over other market participants. And so within this session, what we're going to do is we're going to explore the purpose of entry and how we use this to develop an options edge. I'm going to look at, as I said before, look at trying to match strategy to what the market's actually doing to pick the best, if you like, club out of our, out of, out of our um, golf bag to, to play the conditions or whatever analogy you want to use to make sure that we give ourselves the best chance of profit. We're going to look at the key metrics. One of my major soapbox issues is measuring what you're doing in your trading. So we're going to look at some of the key metrics in looking at how to determine whether your trading is going as well as it should and if not, where the problems actually lie. So you've got the ability to go in and focus, uh, focus on putting those right or, or tightening, the, um, tightening your game up a little bit. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about exits because uh, I would say that 75% of the guys that, that, that I've had the privilege to coach over the years, one of the major things that we work on uh, or we see a problem with and need to work on in the early time is, is exits. And that's simply because much of the attention, much of the focus is all about entries. It's, it's, but it's really what happens then which is key. I'll talk about the five key mistakes and we'll look perhaps at what the market is telling us now. So that's what we're going to cover, so a fairly content rich, rich session, so please, please feel free to ask questions at any time, we'll stop at various points to have a look through uh, and I'll make a commitment to answer any question, um, I'll, I'll write to you personally, any question I don't get a chance to answer during the session because of time, uh, I'll come back and, and make sure you get an answer, okay? So let's look at entry. First, well, what is the purpose of entry? Quite simply, it's this. We're looking to find trades which give us a high probability of it going in our desired direction. Entry is not what determines profit or loss. Entry is what gives us a high probability. That's the aim.
Now with options, you add that because you've got so many tools in your toolbox, you add to that to choose the correct strategy to take advantage of the market move that you're seeing and the current risk in the market. So for example, of course, we've been in a very different market in the last, well, really since December, than we've seen the previous 12 months. There have been different risks and different types of movement and therefore that merits different strategies. So how do we achieve this person? Well, the first thing is, as I've already mentioned, we use primary leading, not lagging indicators that show us the potential change in market sentiment before a major market come, major market move occurs. Uh, this is a Hawkeye chart, and I'll just explain a couple of things on this. So what we've got uh, is a, a trend you'll see uh, on the chart itself, which is green, white, or red, meaning it's an uptrend, it's in congestion, or it's in downtrend. What we see on the bottom is not only volume bars, but we see them also covered. Now, this is a 645-point a, a algorithm that determines whether it's buying and selling pressure. And those of you who are on the last session will have, will have heard uh, Mark talk about trying to determine whether it's the buyers or the sellers that are in control. Now, if you've got the ability to access the information that says, hey, look, who's in control is looking as though it's going to change, then you can see how that's going to give you an edge. You're going to be at the front of the queue when that new trend does occur. So if we look at perhaps a, a couple of examples from here, if we look perhaps at uh, back at the end of March, you'll see we move from downtrend to congestion and then into uptrend. And we saw green or buying volume coming in as it was in congestion. We knew this was topping out here and therefore we were able to take uh, this trade off the table um, because we saw uh, a neutral volume and subsequently going into selling volume on that last green dot, that last green uptrend dot. So we had the warning twice, both to get in and to get out, that those were decisions backed up by a leading potential change in market sentiment. Obviously, we don't act until we see that actual change, but it gives us the heads up that that change is coming. If we move on further along the chart, uh, again, we move into congestion here. This is called a wide bar, this yellow bar, we're gonna talk about that later, that's hugely exciting, particularly those who are trading multiple uh, multiple option, uh, option strategies. Um, but we'll save that till, till a little later in the presentation. But we're in congestion here. We see green volume coming in. That confirms that that uptrend has buying volume associated with it. And again, there's a nice move up and we exited the position around this point here. So that's number one point. We're using leading, not lagging indicators to gain our entry edge. And give us that high probability of the trade continuing in our direction. Secondly, we use multiple time frames to ensure we're trading with the market to reduce noise. And with options, we tend to use two sets of time frames. If we're looking at a longer term position, such as a, a diagonal call spread or a longer term, uh, longer term bull call or bull put, we would tend to use daily, weekly, monthly charts and look for confirmation across all three charts. If we were looking at a shorter term weekly option trade, we're going to talk weekly options later again, then we would look at uh, daily, two-day, weekly as our three time frames. So what we're looking for is green buying volume on all three time frames and at least uptrend on our fastest time frame. Once we're in a trade, we use the fastest time frame for exit. Now, of course, this is the market as it is now. And this Really, again, we want to keep it quite simple. So there's two things we look at to help us determine strategy in the first instance. There are a few other things which we can talk about later. Again, for those of you who may choose to move forward. But really, the two major things are the index itself and, of course, uh, the VIX index, which we're going to show up in a minute. And as you know, this has been a, a phenomenally unusual uh, six months or so. We're traded within a range of around about 6% from top to bottom and that hasn't happened for over 100 years in, in such a long time uh, such a long time period um, and of course uh, and of course we've popped back down to 2080 on the 
2080 on the S&P 500 um, on Friday, which again is a key line in the sand, as you will see here. So there's the bottom, there's the top of the range, and there's a, about 2080, or around about 27.5. Um, if we look at the pivot lows here, and here, and here. So in terms of what strategies fit this market, uh, we've got to determine which are going to be the ones that are going to keep us safest, um, bearing in mind the risks that we see in this type of choppy market because it isn't volatile volatility is to do with a wide range and of course I've already stated that we're actually trading within quite a tight range and we can see this if we look at the VIX just let that come up I recognize it sometimes a little like so look at the VIX we're seeing uh, relative lows volatility is well below its 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 long-term average. The average on the VIX is historically around about 18 or 19. Of course, in GFC, we popped up to 84. And just for those of you who are less familiar with this, the VIX measures implied volatility uh, and hence uh, goes up, implied volatility on options, and hence goes up when the market's concerned. We get a greater demand for, uh, for options. That so it pushes implied volatility higher, and hence it's we see an inverse relationship between this and the S&P 500. So hence it's named the fear index or the anxiety index, depending on which book you read. But combining this with the S&P 500 gives us, providing of course we've got the system, gives us the ideal two things to start to have a look at which strategy may be the best for us. And certainly, if we looked at last year, it was a very, very different picture. We had the S&P 500 on a weekly chart in uptrend the whole year although there were obvious pullbacks at various points in time. And we had the VIX at historically low volumes. What that meant is directional trading city, okay, so buying calls primarily. And that's one of the reasons why we did so well. So even though we got stopped on some of those pullbacks uh, with some of the trades that we're in, it gave us the opportunity to, um, to use that as our primary strategy. As I said, now we've got the most difficult market conditions really since all the debt ceiling stuff that was going on between September and December 2011. Um, certainly, personally, I've um, personally I've sort of found this very challenging. It's it's been a great test of, of me and me as an as an options trader, and certainly talking to some of the guys that have been in the markets for a long time, everybody's finding it the same deal. And really, part of the reason that's the case is because it's headline driven. We've got the Fed and when and if they're going to raise interest rates this year. And of course, it looks like they, they are from, uh, from from what's coming out of the, the mouth of Janet Yellen. But when the rate rise does come, it's going to be it's going to be small and it's going to be measured. And even though there may be a knee jerk response to that going forward, it'll be actually quite nice to have a uh, to have a some degree of normality after a few years of not. Then, of course, we've had Greece and to a lesser degree China over the last month or so, which has pushed the market up and down, not because of Greece itself, but because of the potential contagion effects across Europe. And now, of course, we're in earnings season. And uh, interestingly, we've, we're seeing sort of over 70% of the S&P 500 that have reported so far uh, beat on EPS, uh, but of course, 50, only 50% are beating on revenues. And it was poor revenues during the week uh, with some, uh, some of the big tech stocks, uh, Apple in particular was noteworthy, uh, Microsoft also, uh, which um, which raised concerns again about the rest of earnings season and pushed the market back down again. When it looked, and it had a, actually tested record intraday highs on Tuesday or Wednesday. So really what it's saying is this is not a directional market. So bringing all that together and looking at uh, looking at what's important. What we're saying is that if we look at how to develop an edge and how to match strategy to market conditions, if we're to do that based on the information that you've had already, they'll, well, single leg directional trading, i.e. bought calls or bought puts, are out unless you're trading live. Okay, so if you're trading just with conditional orders or just a, a brief touch um, once a day in the market, then there's a fair chance that you're, uh, you're going to get quite hurt with the with the choppiness that, that's occurring now, if you are trading directionally, then it's low uh, it's low dollar risk scalping with smaller position size, uh, and 
one of the things that is important, as it is with any vehicle uh, with options, is, is that you have a position, position sizing formula to, uh, in which to calculate, uh, calculate how many contracts you to take. So debit call put spreads may work and, and one of the things that we're finding is, is butterfly trades where we're trading within the range, uh, relatively short term, uh, are working quite well. The problem with this low volatility, remember choppy doesn't equal volatility, the problem with the low volatility that we've seen is that um, if we're trading credit spreads, and for those less experienced, I'll actually show you what I mean by a credit spread in a little while, but if you're trading credit spreads, what you're doing is you're sacrificing, um, if you like, a, risk, a good risk reward ratio for a lesser chance of a risk event being triggered. So what I mean by that is if we put a position away from the market action and give it plenty of room to move up and down, then we're lessening the chance of a, ri of, of a risk event being happening, i.e. we take a loss. Um, however, because volatility is low, we're having to put credit spreads very close to the market. But there's something I'm going to show you in a, in a few minutes, which will uh, knock your socks off. Okay, it's it's a very powerful, uh, very powerful indicator that um, that we can put on the market and give us the best chance, particularly during earnings, to to do well. And longer term trading strategies are are, are also very, very, uh, very, very potentially good for you. Uh, we've got uh, two diagonal call spreads in the in the Hawkeye options. Um, Trade Alert Portfolio Service, which have been running for the last three or four months, and uh, and the idea behind them, again, for those of you who are less uh, less experienced, is we we uh, it's like a leverage covered call. So what we're doing is we're instead of the stock, we're buying a long term call or the right to buy the stock, and then subsequently selling weekly calls, weekly call options, or two weekly call options over the top. And we've got a uh, January positions open, which we can then review and push out even further, uh, and those are serving us very well in this particular market. So again, you're using uh, you're using market movements to to determine when is the best time to to sell your option and of course to to, to subsequently close it out. Okay, so um, before I go into the next segment, uh, I'm just going to have a quick look at questions on on that particular bit. Let's see if there is any up there. I will, of course. Say hello to Nigel for you, Larry. Um, yes, look, the, there are a couple of other things, but uh, uh, that, that we use to determine uh, use to determine strategy. Um, but really, uh, we, we're going to cover those in for those of you going to who, who are going to move forward. It's it's probably beyond the scope of what we're covering here. Okay. Um, I'll, it will be, uh, the recording will be available by the way, yes. Um, okay, we're going to go on to measurement. Okay, and this is one of the things that uh, probably is most neglected by traders, is actually measuring uh, their trading as a whole. Okay, uh, if we look at the actual trades themselves, there are, there are a few different things we can measure. Uh, we can measure profit loss, which is of course, is what um, what we tend to look at first uh, in our early days of trading. We can look at win loss ratios, which a lot of air players given to, but is not necessarily the best thing to talk about. Or we can look at average win versus average loss. And each of these should be not looked at in terms of a whole, but for each strategy, and in the context of market conditions. So we need to compare apples with apples. So let's look at the win-loss ratio as, as a start point because it's, it's not something that I would tend to use um, as my primary uh, as my primary measure of, of particular trades. So really, win-loss ratio measures how often a trade goes in our direction. It doesn't measure the degree of win or loss, and that really isn't congruent. It's not consistent with this underpinning market cliche, which is absolutely crucial to not only pay lip service to, but also follow through into practice of keeping losses small and letting profits run. So if we're trading directionally, win-loss is not the primary measure that's going to determine whether we have long-term success or not. And this is really important to get your head around. For other strategies, 
it may be very important. So, for example, the weekly options, uh, the weekly credit spreads that will will sometimes enter when the market uh, conditions are good, then win loss be, is is vitally important in those particular strategies. And the reason for that is is for the for the uh, for the statement I made before that the risk reward ratio on a credit spread is often quite uh, quite significantly poor on on the surface, but you are taking the risk event away. But in essence, with credit spreads, what you're doing is your your maximum return may be as uh, as low as ten or fifteen percent, and your maximum risk is is eighty five ninety ninety percent. So uh, again, I'll talk about that in a later. But so it is worth win loss is worth measuring, um, but not as your primary uh, metric for directional trading. So what is well look here's um, here's the directional trading we did uh, over eight months, and this is over fifty five trades, and average days in trade was nine, and uh, that, that the range was two to twenty three days, just to give you a profile. Um, now there's a, a, a oh, I thought I'd fix this. There's a line gone off that, uh, but really what you'll see absolutely clearly is the green are our wins and the reds are our losses. And it wasn't as though we didn't have um, didn't have times where we had a series of losses in a row. We had five in a row there. We had four in a row there, and, and a couple of, a couple against us. So if we look at these 55 trades, the wins were. 28, the losses were 27, so a one-to-one -one win to loss ratio essentially, and yet the total result was 250% return on investment. And the reason for that is, is because our average win was 65.54%, our average loss was 21.3%. So essentially our reward to risk results ratio was 3 to 1. I trust that makes sense, and that's why, if we're directionally trading, then look at our average win versus our average loss is absolutely crucial, because that's going to give you the best clue of all that you're doing the right things, and not just with entry, of course, but after that as well. So that really, looking at that metric and looking at those results is and giving ourselves that edge is really what it's about, but we wouldn't know that and we wouldn't know to carry on and mirror that unless we're measuring it. Measuring it is absolutely crucial. Uh, look, look, I mean, for those that are really serious about trading, there's, a, there's probably some of you on here that are just having a little go, just testing the water, putting your foot into trading, but really if we look at what the top 5% of traders have in their toolbox, it's a whole battery of tools of measuring the systems they have to develop their edge. I was thinking before we, we, we started the session, is there anything I could show you to illustrate that? Uh, and probably the best example is something I'm just going to quickly whiz through now. If you give me a second, I'll just bring it up. And it's just a, a, a very simple tool. Okay. Okay, you should be able to see that on your screen now. Okay, so this is our uh, this is our four ways. Okay, our four ways calculator to grow your trading business. Okay, so this is for those guys who are trading as a business. So let's just go down the key metrics here. So let's say we're placing number uh, three trades every week. Our average profit loss was two hundred dollars plus. That would mean our turnover is six hundred. Let's say we our trading costs were $97. That would give us a total profit of 503 bucks. Uh, and let's say we invested eight hours in that week in trading. It would mean only about $62 an hour. Okay. Now, by changing one of these things, if we measure these four things, here's the power of it, right? To change that three to four. See, already we've now increased our profit by 28% in a week. We're investing exactly the same number of hours and our hourly rate has gone up to $87 an hour. Now what if you were to work on all of these things? What if you not only to place an additional trade because you'd, you'd got the results to have the confidence to put some more capital in for example, but you also looked at ways of tightening your average trade profit loss up and maybe weren't shy of, of investing in uh, putting some more money in and by that we, by trading costs we mean 
um, we mean things like additional software or some additional training, subscriptions, that sort of thing. So let's just, uh, and let's say we uh, we invested, try to invest slightly less hours. We, we sort of got a little smarter, okay? So let's say we take our trades up to five a week. Let's say we tightened our trading up and we our average profit loss became, uh, let's say became 240. Uh, well, uh, let's take our trading, uh, let's take our trading costs up to uh, 120 because we've uh, we've entered another subscription. Oops. And let's say we've managed to get a little more smart time, and we're only now investing six hours a week, not eight hours a week. Our hourly rate is now $180 an hour, and we're now making $1,000 just by making small changes in, in in each of these components. So when I say measuring your trading is absolutely crucial, you need to treat it like a business and measure it like a business. I hope that was interesting. Um, so, uh, is that something that you'd like to you'd like to have? Because uh, th there is uh, possibly a, a free link that I can dig out um, to access this and a, a, there's a journal template and that sort of stuff. Would that be of interest? Type in type yes in the question box if if that's of interest to you. Okay. Okay. Well, it seems to be it seems to be a yes for sure. Okay. So, um, oh yeah. Okay. Lots of yeses. Right. Give me a second. I will just type something in. And I think there's a trade audit. This is an old uh, an old page I had. It. There's a trade in audit thing. Um, There we go, I've now typed it on the slide. Okay, so if you go to hawkeyeoptions.com forward slash four ways, uh, that, should, uh, that should allow you to access those and just make a note of that, you can go there later. Okay, but I hope you get the message about how important measurement is. Right, so why are timely exits important? We've talked about, we've talked about entries, now let's look at exits. Okay, so the idea, as we've said, about entries is we increase the probability of a trading idea going in our direction. It's exits that determine the real deal dollar impact of those entries. It, they're necessary for determining profit, and they're necessary to minimize loss in your total limit, along with position sizing, of course. So if you were to look at an option trading plan, and those who, who move forward with us get an, an options trading plan to have a look at, um, and to use the template. It's not enough to say that simply your exit will be determined by a specific indicator. Your exit system must take into account these points. So your trail stop, okay? So how are you actually gonna trail your stop up or are you just gonna use the force or some other supernatural power? When you tighten the stop, and an example of this may be that you, uh, you potentially see a, uh, if you can see a resistance or a, or a previous pivot high, that may be a, indication that you need to time to stop up, okay? Re retain some of the profit. And because the the, the risk, the, the trade risk has changed because that is potentially ceiling. It's called resistance for a reason. So if you're long, there's a resistance above, um, maybe a dollar above from where you are in option terms, that's gonna be ni a nice return. Let's say it goes up 90 cents, you've got a 10 cent potential extra reward and a 90 cent potential loss if it then trundles trundles its way all, all the way back down. So that's the reason why you may tighten the stop. Profit targets is another way to play that game. And so again, you should have it articulated within your plan how you're gonna take profit targets or how you're gonna set profit targets, sorry. Now I put staged exit in, in brackets because I don't, partic I don't use staged exits. I back tested, forward tested, inside out tested whether uh, staged exits work or not and they don't for me. Now that's not to say that they, uh, they won't work for you, you've got to test that out for yourself and buy a staged exit just for clarity. What I mean is that if something goes up, uh, then you maybe remove half of your position uh, and, and leave half of the position in just to see where it's going to go next. To me, an exit is an exit and so that's why I choose not to. I've never found any monetary value I in doing that. Um, I trust that makes sense, but that's for me, that's for me as an individual, it may not be for you. So, but test it out if you're doing that stage exit approach. And of course, minimizing exits, your initial stop that you said, and of course, uh, 
options are being a time limited vehicle, you would have a time stop, uh, what we call an event stop, which would be something happening in your personal world, or perhaps a fund, big fundamental event um, that may be about to change the market if it doesn't go your way, you perhaps don't want to be part of that game, or perhaps it, the strategy that you're using isn't appropriate for that particular event. So use this as a checklist. Look at your trading plans that you've got in place. Now, have you got all of these things in place, articulated specifically and objectively, so they're measurable? So a little bit on Hawkeye Act, and this is uh, an uh, MDL trade we've got in here, and on the base of a break of that pivot high, new uptrend, and we decided to set a profit target of 380R, and boom, it was triggered. Um, so. Again, we see the volume coming in while it's still in congestion, and that gives us the heads up that this may move. Of course, I've already said, we can trade a range, and this was CHK, and we saw it move into this range on green volume, didn't think it would break this level. The weekly chart was still in congestion, so it wasn't a, a clear, um, uh, a clear, directional entry, uh, but we figured that buying a 1450, 1550, 1650 butterfly would work, and it did, it, it took, throw, uh, threw us back 100%, uh, we actually exited at this point here, um, when it uh, when it looked as though it was about to come back down, it was, was mid-range, and there was only a few days to expire at that stage. But again, we're using we're using volume and, and price across multiple time frames to make that decision. Uh, JMPR, um, again, uh, looks like a potential butterfly setup. Um, here we are in congestion on the daily, it is on the weekly as well. So we could look to enter a 26, 27, 28 is the top range. That might be a nice trade for now. Okay, five major mistakes that option traders make with line frequency. Don't measure the trading beyond the PL. We've talked about that already. Trade one strategy to cover all markets. If you just trade one strategy, that isn't consistent with matching strategy to market. Focus energies, efforts, and time on entry. Yeah, I hope you've got that message already. Fail to recognize how risk, risk changes during the life of trading. That's that example of a profit target or tightening your stop. And don't give yourself permission not to trade. If there's other things going on in your world outside of trading, which merit your attention and give them the attention they need, take a step back from trading because you've got to be in the best decision-making state to be able to trade well and consistently well. And here's a bonus six, don't shortcut your learning. If you shortcut your learning, you'll get shortcut results. It's really as simple as that. So very quickly, I'm gonna show you this thing called the Hawkeye wide bar. Here's the wide bar here. And really, this is a, a bar that demonstrates large increase in last bar, uh, last bar volatility and the potential, therefore, for short-term price instability. So generally speaking, we wouldn't enter a directional trade if we saw a wide bar in existence. Okay, but here's the thing. We can use this as, a, as an indicator for credit spreads. So the rules, are two of the rules, two of the five rules of the game are that if we get a wide bar and it finishes in the desired direction of a trade uh, on, in the last third of the bar, then we can enter the credit spread. So for example here we had A and F, okay, so wide bar closed in the last third of the bar so we could then put a, uh, a nice 23-24 um, bear call spread uh, with two weeks to expire and of course um, that would be that position there and that would expire worthless and therefore enable us to retain premium. Here, last third of the bar, we've got to move up, so we'll place a 2120 and again, look at the next eight to 10 bars, that was fine, thank you very much. And we would have been caught on this one, but on this downtrend, last third of the bar, then we would have uh, again placed a bear call there and plenty of scope for that to bounce around. So there we've got three out of four trades. If we look at another chart, uh, Microsoft, uh, we've got a nice short trade here. There's a bear call spread, didn't finish above that bar in the next two weeks. There's a bull put spread there, 
didn't finish below this bar in the next two weeks another um, that obviously exploded so we've got two opportunities we've got a bull put there which went out in our favor bull put there which went in our favor you get in the message here so there's another four trades that have gone our direction out of full Nvidia okay we've got a short trade here there's a bear put bear call spread there's another short trade another bear call spread still within the two weeks and we can go the opposite direction with a bull put here Okay, so again, three out of three trades. And we can put up chart after chart after chart after chart and see exactly the same picture. And for those of you who are gonna work with us for over a couple of sessions, then we're actually gonna show you this in action and you're gonna confidence. But the thing is, the problem with weekly options is, is when you hear about them, people tend to highlight the reward and hide the risk. So let's just, look at what people say well weekly options very little time well yes they do but only if you've got a great system and you've got the tools in place to be able to do it it's not easy uh, no trading is easy uh, otherwise everybody will be doing it you've got to put in the hard yards at the beginning to get the results out the back end and we can get income every week out of options well this is okay um, referencing the diagonal call spread we only get income every week if we manage the sold leg very well and what tends to be hidden a little bit is that that idea of a really risk reward ratio that isn't very favorable but obviously we're taking the risk event away trading fees on weekly options if we're using multiple eggs can be significant so we've got to we've got to ensure a viability and again that's missed in terms of what people will tell you Weekly options are not suitable for some markets, as I've already indicated. Low volatility markets are not suitable for credit spreads because you've got to put them too close to the action so you're not taking the, the risk event away. And this idea of adjusting, um, this idea of adjusting credit spreads, uh, it, again, is not something I would subscribe to. I've seen too many people hurt by trying to adjust. Um, so you recognize that you're increasing the risk if you adjust. You can't just roll it over and hope it's gonna cross your fingers and again, use the force to, uh, to, to, to hope it's going to go back in your direction but with the right information you can make regular profit if you've got the right tools in place so there's two major strategies when we talk weekly options and we're going to talk about these again for those of you who are going to move forward we can either do the idea of a credit spread short term move the chance of a risk event away take advantage of of um, high volatility situations um, such as earnings reports etc or this idea of holding a long-term position and reducing the risk every week by selling calls but you need to have the right things in place just to give you an indication that Hawkeye indicator that I showed you there what we did was we set up a trial we showed people how to set up a new system so right from the get-go we said we like this indicator let's test this system let's everybody be part of this we invited people in so they could see it um, completely transparently and we saw 17 trades out of 20 go away, go away. now that's a win-loss ratio which is going to make you profit when you're trading credit spreads so it's going to give you the opportunity to come and join us for two live sessions and in those two sessions what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the components of an options trading plan look at the market and really get tight on the idea of matching strategies to market conditions we're going to give you the basics of how we do that and the trading idea behind each of these strategies including weekly options we're going to look at this wide band. We're going to talk. The whole of the second session is going to be on weekly options. We're going to pick that apart. We're going to tell you how it is. We're going to tell you how we do it, and we're going to give you some guidance, uh, including indicative trading plans, to be able to take it forward for yourself. So we're going to give you that blueprint for strategy choice, that blueprint for trading weekly options, and also because it's absolutely vital, make sure that you've got absolute clarity on position sizing for options trading. You can get handouts, worksheets relating to each of the topics that we cover over those two days. But also, we're going to give you now a directional options position sizing calculator, a quick guide to option strategies for those that are new, and we're developing a trading mastery series now, uh, which we're releasing the videos five every uh, five every fortnight to give you a chance to put things into practice. These are, these are short five minute videos. We're going to give you those to add value, giving you well over $500 worth of real value for an investment of only $97. Now, to access this, 
which is really a, a sensational offer. You go to hawkeyeoptions.com forward slash today. Now, just to really nail it home is um, there's many of you here are serious traders and want to give options trading a try or want to time the options trading you do already. I want to work with people who want to be that empowered independent trader, want to learn to fish. So what I'm going to do for people who step up and take action if you enroll in the next hour is I'm going to give you access to the Trade Alert uh, service, the Trade Alert port, so portfolio service for the next two weeks, our membership area um, which attracts a monthly subscription but this is only open to the first 50 people before we close it down today okay so go to go to that uh, link make it happen and we look forward to working with you guys that want to move forward with us um, so I'll leave that link on the bottom so you can get uh, you can get enrolled now look forward to working with you guys and but before we go let's just spend the last three or four minutes answering any questions that you've got to try and give you some clarity uh, on whatever it is you need clarity on uh, before we depart and hand over to the next speaker. Let's just whiz on down here and find some. Oh wow, still going through all the yeses that we had before. Yes, we'll be going through the charts on that, uh, on those two sessions, we're going to make sure you've got clarity on that. If you haven't got Hawkeye Trader, uh, Hawkeye Software, we're going to give you the alternative um, for that wide bar, so you can um, using relatively simple indicators, everybody has access to. Uh, so yes, you get the video. Um, there's the link again. If you want the free link, it's that and four ways, uh, which I know many of you have already taken advantage of. So. In terms of the wide bar, we're using the, uh, obviously with credit spreads, we go in the opposite direction that the market, or we place our strikes the opposite direction of the market, the, the way the market's going. So if the market's going up, we would place a bull call spread, so below the wide bar. If we are, um, if we think the market's going to go down, we would place uh, the two strikes above the wide bar as a bear call spread. But we're going to go through this in detail as we go through the as we go through the course that was set up for you. Hope that clarifies it, John. Expiry, we we rarely go over two weeks um, for for credit spreads, uh, particularly in a particularly in a market like this. So yeah, one to two weeks. Uh, the charts, uh, Hawkeye is a plugin um, which we which can plug into various uh, 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 various chart software. So um, some people would plug it directly into something like TradeStation, or if they're trading forex, would use a uh, plug it into an MT4 platform. Uh, many of you, or many many clients, use um, uh, Ninja Trader, which is obviously free. Um, so they would do their charting using Ninja Trader with Ender Trade Data or Live Data if they choose to buy it, and then trade on Options Express or Think or Swim or whatever they, uh, whatever their standard pl uh, platform is for trading. The Master Series is just a simple, uh, it's just five minute videos on specific aspects of trading which we found over the last few years that people have wanted to sharpen up. Some of them will be rele very relevant, others will be just refreshing. So, uh, sorry, revision. So it, it really is, um, it really is making sure people have clarity in all of the things they need to work on, irrespective of a vehicle. Um, though some of them are options bias, some of them got an options bias. We've tried to make it so they have relevance across many vehicles. Are oh, you welcome? Uh, I hope that uh, answered you. I hope I've answered your question already about TOS. Yes, it is recorded, Jim. The the two day live event has got to be recorded, and I'm also going to give you um, access to me via email uh, during that. Uh, it's on the third and the tenth of August, uh, so you're going to get access to me uh, after both of those sessions via email, so I can pick up any questions that you've got, and also uh, if we don't get a chance to uh, um, to answer them on the webinar.
So just to reiterate the offer, um, so it's $97, you get the access to the two one and a half hour sessions, you get the trading uh, mastery series, and you get access to the trade alerts and portfolios for the next four weeks or upgrade to a month. And uh, th that's what you get, plus the position sizing calculator, plus the um, plus this quick guide to uh, to option strategies. That's that's the offer for um, for ninety seven dollars. Dan, a great question. How easy is it for a beginner? I um, look. You're going to have to. Um, there is some work to put in, but that's why I wanted to put in the support there. There's a couple of other resources I'm going to make available to those who are very new. Um, so. Uh, the combination of additional support and other resources will help you guys who are a little bit a little bit greener in terms of options trading or even totally green. My aim for you is uh, after that session and uh, after those two sessions, you should be in a, a great place to decide whether options is something that you would like to explore even further. And the idea of the trader and portfolio service is that you see it's it's essentially education actions. You see you see education in action. You see options being traded from trading idea through to entry, through, right through to exit. Okay, I think we're and you're very welcome. Yes, we are using the highs and the lows, John, of the wide bars. Um it's not a standalone, uh, Lawrence Hawkeye isn't standalone, but that, don't let that stop you because I'm going to give you the non-Hawkeye version as well. Um, E-Signal, yes it is available on, on E-Signal. Um, no, it won't be charged anymore. Um, the subscription is a no lock-in. Um, Subscription is $99 a month if you choose to move forward and there's no locking on that. You can uh, let us know at any time and you can get out um, if you choose to go down the subscription. Uh, Lawrence, it would probably have to be the, the Ninja Trader, but I will go through that on the session itself for you. That's the offer, exactly. Um, the, the software, yes, there is a, uh, an additional cost for the software, um, but as I said, what we're going to do is going to make sure that you know how to trade it with, without. Um, really what you need clarity on, if you're not using Hawkeye, what you need clarity on is um, you need to be clear on what you consider to be a buy signal and a sell signal, and we'll, we'll talk about uh, the, ways to, um, the ways to incorporate some aspects of VSA um, outside, of, outside of Hawkeye. You're very welcome, Jim. Yes, it does work with MT4. Fantastic, Nick. Great that you're uh, great that you're in, and you're going to join us in the room as well. That's superb, Nick. Yes, Travis. Absolutely, trading should be simple, and the dots are great. But we need to have volume to back that up, uh, and the um, the change in trend is is. Um, Again, it's a, a relatively complex algorithm. The trend changes uh, uh, along with the volume. Yes, you should get uh, access to the recordings. Great that the link's working. Uh, uh, I've answered that, I think, in terms of going on. Um, I do recognize I'm running a couple of minutes over. I hope that's OK. So I want to make sure I give you guys the best chance of um, but uh, Hawkeye doesn't work on on TOS. It's a plugin to some others, but there is a solution around that. And as I said before, I'm going to look at other uh, solutions outside of Hawkeye that can give you the information of what that wide bar actually means, um, or what that wide bar would look at would look like in non-Hawkeye terms. Um, that's really important to me that you get the you get that um, irrespective of whether you're using Hawkeye or not. And then you can swing back around later and look at Hawkeye if you so choose to. Um, that's um, that's of course something you can do. But really, it's uh, I want everybody to be able to trade that particular idea of a uh, of a wide uh, one-day volatility uh, bar. 
that answers your question, Bud. Look forward to seeing you there. Uh, Shiresh, um, first step is is ninety seven dollars, and if you do the um, nine dollars, then it does automatically start you on the subscription. But of course, you can cancel that beforehand. Uh, so that's, uh, and we'll also be talking about the subscription on the on the uh, very briefly on the two day course for those of you who want to move forward. And the idea of being able to look at the trade alert portfolio service is that that will help you make your decision as well. Glad you like it, William. You're very welcome. If you guys have any final questions, just in case I've missed them, you can type them in again. Shiresh, you're welcome. Uh, you didn't mention how Hawkeye monitors the volatility of options. Um, we are making decisions based on the underlying equity, uh, not the options itself. Um, the volatility of options generally um, uh, we see in the VIX uh, as, a, as a market as a whole. Uh, for those who are advanced, uh, we do run uh, additional courses once we're sure that uh, people have grasped the basics on looking at things like uh, looking at things like taking advantage of, of high implied volatility versus versus low um, and whether to be a buyer or seller in that in that particular situation because that obviously has application for credit spreads but invariably if you see the Hawkeye wide bar on the underlying equity implied volatility will shoot through the roof and one of the reasons why earnings season is such a good time to do that and you'll notice this with the pricing of options around earnings is that you see uh, is you see a high probability a high implied volatility priced into the option because of course the market expects it to or implied volatility really is a forward looking thing if the market thinks it's going to move dramatically away from its current price point and implied volatility will go up and hence the price the premium will be greater as a, as a seller we want to take advantage of that and, uh, and that's why credit spreads are good around that time if you pick up that big price movement initially I hope that helps answer your question very quickly Larry, really appreciate that. That's really kind feedback. Thank you, mate. Really appreciate it. Bruce, you too. Thanks for the feedback. Um, I look forward to, yeah, look, uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, there will be other presentations in the future. Um, and I'd be delighted to see you here. Wow. Uh, EJ, what are the... Uh, what are the implications uh, global macro of the markets mentioned that have such low volatility in the past 100 years? Well, really, it's it's not uh, an implication of, it's really a reflection of. Um, and, and as I stated, we've, we've, um, we've had uh, we've had a number of headlines that have driven the market up and down with, with frequency, uh, along with the, obviously the, um, the technical side of things. There's not been sufficient evidence uh, or, or sufficient lack of headwinds to push the market beyond that uh, 2035 level on the S&P 500 and that's really uh, a reflection of it looked as though it was going to do it this week, earnings started off well, revenues are coming in okay and then we had uh, three, or four, uh, three or four of the big guys came in, at, um, uh, came in with disappointing revenues and that uh, really fueled the market fears that that was going to be the case uh, and obviously part of the reason that, that revenues are low is, is because of the strong USD. Um, so what's next Suresh? Um, Hawkeyeoptions.com today. That's great. Uh, the replay is, is, will be avail made available. Okay guys, well I think, um, I think I've probably answered it as much as I can. So unless there's any screaming, urgent last questions, I better hand <laughs> over because I'm sure there's. A, I'm, I'm sure our next speaker is ready to rock and roll. Our next speaker is ready to rock and roll, and thank you so much, Mike. What a great presentation! And uh, as a first timer here on Trade Thirsty Toaster Traders, I can promise you that uh, you will be invited back. So uh, y'all give him a round of applause, and <laughs> I'm going to take your status away from you real quick so that I can put my PowerPoint back up. All good. Um, all right. Have a great Take day. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Uh, and thank you very much. You guys right. too. Bye-bye for now.